I did it! I level 100! Dun, 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 dun. Finally, after four seasons of playing this game, I've been playing for almost a year. I've never been managed to do this before. Uh, there's probably a variety of reasons for that. Honestly, I'm quite proud of myself for this one. I think it's a bigger deal than any amount of currency I've ever really farmed because this is quite a challenge, even as a softcore player. I am not a hardcore player <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. So I want to share with you guys what I did, how I did it, and we'll talk about uh, various different things. Uh, we'll kind of talk about my build, just kind of briefly talk about the build, the passive skills that I chose, uh, my kind of, you know, my defensive layers, offense, uh, recovery, speed, you know, all the things that matter uh, for that, manage to pull this off. We'll talk about the Atlas passes I'm going and the sort of core strategy I'm doing when I'm running my map because that's quite relevant in how to level uh, your character. I think one thing that's going to make this video stand out amongst uh, many of the others is that this 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 is obviously not a guide <laughs> uh, in any one specific thing it's just kind of piecing a few things together but what makes this particular video interesting for some of you in my opinion is that I solo level to 100 while also doing while also aiming to earn as much currency as I could uh, per hour so I wasn't making any sacrifices in currency like I wasn't just running delve randomly at level at depth 100 or something like that <laughs> uh, To do this. No, I was earning a lot of currency. I've been consistently earning at least like 10 X an hour uh, Mainly farming the cemetery, but I have farmed some other maps. So I'm gonna get into that I'm actually gonna demonstrate one map for you specifically the um, The kind of map I was running when I did in fact ding 100 I'll go over some of my gear because it might surprise some of you guys to learn that I am not running some infinitely expensive build I've definitely cut some corners in the gear cost compared to seasons before. So not only did I hit 100, which I've never done before, but I've I've hit 100 on a character that is way less geared uh, than ever before, uh, with or without the help <laughs> of anyone. Uh, so we'll talk about my gear, and then we'll talk about what I'm doing moving forward. I'm bearing the lead a fair bit here because there's something quite exciting I'm going to uh, spill with you at the very end, especially those of you who like watching my content, you're definitely going to want to stick around uh, to check out the uh, a surprise, if you will, at the end. So let's get into the first part, which is the passive skills. My mind For that, <clears throat> we're going to go here. I am running a Caustic Arrow Toxic Rain Raider, and I am very, very fast. That is one of the that, that's just a real quick tip for you, and that, that's one big reason why I was able to, to uh, farm a lot of currency per hour and uh, be defensive via just moving so fast. Definitely a big deal. I just did... I, I, there's not really a, a specific Caustic Rain guide or Caustic Arrow guide that I'm aware of, um, especially since a shakeup from a couple seasons back, but you can see, you know, I just kind of went down here and took these notes here. First, I went up here and got some of these nodes, got some of the damage nodes. I got a nice uh, large cluster. This POB will be linked in below. I, I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But, you know, taking about a healthy amount of life. Got a little dose, ghost dance because I do have some energy shield. Uh, took the chaos nodes here. One big thing about this build is I'm going aura heavy. I'm running a lot of auras. I got all the aura nodes here. And the very last cluster I picked up before I hit 100 was this one down here, which is even more speed and uh, defense. But if you take a look at the POB, you'll, you will see that there's uh, a lot of defense there. There's, there's a fair amount of evasion, nowhere near evasion cap. There's a lot of armor. Uh, you will see Mage Bane is putting me over 100% spell suppression cap, so that's definitely an absolute must. If we go in here, we can see that I only have uh, 28,000 armor. Doesn't seem like a lot. Although, when I trigger my potions, woo, 52,000, because I'm running alchemist uh, flasks on all three of these utility flasks, and that, that gives me a lot of extra armor there. I do have 100% stun avoidance if I use my mana potion, 103%, that's kind of important too. And the, the real big kicker here, I mentioned this a second ago, 151% increased movement speed in my hideout, so that's 229%. Uh, with a flask on that that's absolutely crazy. I know I know there's honestly not very many builds that can pull off that kind of movement speed <laughs> uh, But you know I did so um, I, I do attribute that to one reason. I don't think you have to have that much movement speed, but it's definitely helping a great deal uh, Let's see here. I don't think there's anything else really to check here. You, you can just explore around the POB if you want 
Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about the gear. Let's talk next about the Atlas passives here. So this entire time I've been running Shrines, Harbinger, and Strongbox. Without question, I've never ever subbed out of those. Um, a few things that have changed is like Breach versus Essence. Um, I wasn't running Beyond until like level 99 and a half. So I will admit that, but ever since getting the Headhunter, so yeah, uh, letting the cat out of the back here, I do have a Headhunter. I do want to point out one thing very important here. I was running this belt right here. This is a, this belt basically costs nothing, minus the Val implicit on it. And I ran this belt until I was level 98 and a half. So I was clearly going to go all the way to 100 with or without the Headhunter, in my opinion. I could have done that uh, pretty easily. So that's there. Back to the Atlas passives. I am running Beyond now. And the shrine, the shrine's such a big deal. I think this is one big thing. Another big thing. So, so number one, just crazy amounts of speed. People might be overlooking how defensive, or how important the, the defensive layer of just having a ton of movement speed is naturally. Another big thing is using the gull with the shrine nodes and running shrine sextants, which we'll get into in a minute here. Uh, putting extra shrines on the map, having the increased buff effect, increased duration. This does a lot for you. It makes you move way faster. It gives you 100% increased defenses in some cases. It gives you 90% all res in many cases. It gives you a whole lot of extra damage. Just kill stuff faster. Uh, there, there's all kinds of good reasons to run this kind of build. I know some builds out there are highly dependent on their helmet, but this is what I've been doing. So definitely uh, going to attribute that to some of the success. Another big thing is... My watcher's eye is actually kind of a big deal here with the uh, nine or sorry, 0 0.93 percent of damage leaks his life while affected by vitality. You may not be aware, but chaos damage builds have a really hard time getting pure leech on their build, so this is one unique way to do it, and it, it's honestly keeps me topped off like crazy. On top of that, I have perhaps an overkill uh, added layer of recovery here with dual tier one and catalyst. Damage taken recouped as life perfect rolls. Um, I really like this in the beginning It makes it so when I take a big hit I just immediately just fill right back up no matter what's going on really uh, It's nice when I'm like running past beyond monsters after I've cleared the map You know they tend not to kill me so it really helps me stay alive in that case plus I am running uh, a Vitality I have to run the vitality for the watcher's eye, but I do have enough aura support here via this uh, implicit here uh, to be running a diversion vitality and when it comes to Oh yeah, at level 15, by the way, not uh, not level 16. So when it comes to the auras, I am running di uh, Determination, Purity of Elements, which gives me uh, Ailment Immunity. That's another big kicker, so I think that's a, probably another one that people sometimes overlook. So what do we have there? We got just a lot of raw speed. We got Shrines with the Gull. We got uh, tons of recovery. Three forms of it, basically, in the form of Recoup, Pure Leech, and... Uh, just regeneration. I mean, let's see how much regeneration I have, actually. I don't really check that here. Uh, honestly, forgetting where to even check <laughs> life regeneration. There we go, 190. Not, not some insane amount, but it's good to have a little bit in there. And then, then another real big kicker is being both stun immune and ailment immune. Uh, definitely kind of necessary if you really want to make it all the way to 100, in my opinion. You can always use the Brine King over here in... Uh, up here if you need really need some help there but i don't need that so i get a little extra help uh against ranged attacks here as well as uh, that one there so yeah that's about it on the atlas passive let's check out what running a map is like now those of you who have been uh, watching my content uh, religiously will know that i'm running cemetery i'm trying to farm brother's stash i'm currently in the process of kind of doing a, a well-balanced juicing approach where in this case, I am going to throw a Beyond uh, map on here. It just makes this a little extra fun and juicy. This map does quite uh, pack quite a punch. Uh, but one nice thing about my character is that I can run any map modifiers. There's nothing in a map. There's no map that bricks my build. Uh, one reason I'm able to make so much currency per hour is because I'm able to juice maps up passively uh, as, about as high as you can via the Atlas. I'm able to run uh, eight modded corrupted maps of any modifiers whatsoever and I can farm them via the sextant easily currently I'm running hunted traders I'm running a strong box to fish out the uh, brother stash and I'm running 
Gloom Shrine. <laughs> because it helps me kill things almost instantly, which is another, probably the last super big tip. Uh, the best defensive layer is more offense. You know, that's, that's some kind of proverb, I think, somewhere. And the Gloom Shrine absolutely fulfills that role. Let's take a look here. So we're going to put Beyond on the map. We have Beyond as a modifier on the map. Beyond the craft. We have Beyond uh, Atlas Passive Nose. So this is essentially triple Beyond. And we're going to run this. And I'm actually going to time this run on my phone to see how fast I can get this done. I'm running an uber strict loot filter. I see almost nothing that's worth less than a Chaos. And I will get through this map very quickly. So I just hit basically anything on the way through. Oh, um, one more thing I should mention. You'll notice that I'm completely skipping Arch Nemesis. So that's probably the biggest tip of all. <laughs> the biggest tip of all is usually it would seem that the League mechanic, whatever it is in a given League, is probably attributes to most of the uh, deaths, more deaths than anything, because of the unfamiliarity of unfamiliarity of it because of it just being like this new thing that people don't know and then it's quite often overtuned on top of that and it creates a lot of problems for people so uh, it's kind of a blessing in disguise the fact that this league the league mechanic itself is basically garbage <laughs> It's not very good. Uh, and if you want to level to 100, you should definitely not be running it uh, because it will uh, you will meet your demise at certain points uh, because of a sort of uh, freak accidents or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's that. This map's actually turning out really great. I'm getting tons of scarab drops. Uh, this is not going to work out so good as far as timing a map run. I'm going to have to spend a whole bunch of extra time looting the map. But I'm going around. I normally don't see a blight. I normally don't really even do a blight. Uh, but in this case, I will do it because I can do it without losing much time. Also, with Triple Beyond Blight, it's actually super juicy, so that's good too. And you can see how many Headhunter buffs I have. I kind of actually forgot for a second to go back and do this Breach here. I don't want to forget to do that. So I'm doing a Breach and a Blight at the same time. I'm also clearing new area at the same time. And this is making me exceptionally um, efficient with a lot of Headhunter buffs to pull this off. I'm going in and triggering another... Blight. Oh, I failed that Blight barely. I got most of the value out of it, though. Normally, the Blight rewards themselves don't amount to anything. Really, it's all about the Beyond monsters that spawn from them, or, or to a lesser extent, the drops from the Blight reward... Uh, from the explosion itself. So I'm not that concerned about it, really. Quite often, it just seems like a, like a bit of a trap, time sync-wise. I haven't really looted anything, as you can see. It's kind of more important that I keep my Headhunter buffs up. And I go through here and... Yeah. Basically, no, I didn't realize I had Metamorph on here as well. Now, Met Metamorph I will go ahead and do. I'm still having like 30 Headhunter buffs. I can go in here and crush this thing really quick. Okay, and now we're in loot mode. So I'm going to go ahead and start looting here. Uh, we got a lot of Scarabs to pick up. Definitely made a lot of money in this run. Didn't get any kind of Brother Stash or anything special. So that's fine. Yeah, on second thought, I think uh, there's so much stuff to loot here, I'm going to make an executive decision, and I'll just leave this open, and after the video is done, I will go in and loot that. I've been in that map for exactly three minutes at this time, and usually the map takes me only about three minutes of time uh, total in order to get it completed, start to finish. Uh, th three, three and a half minutes. If, assuming there's no, like, unusually high number of scarab drops or whatever. So, uh, let's see. Next on the agenda is the gear threshold. So what kind of gear am I running with here? I just want to come clean to you. I do I do have a few exalts invested in this build. Uh, this bow, for example, costs exactly 10x uh, to make. It's 100% deterministic, actually, uh, minus the tier of the chaos damage over time roll from the Hunter Slam. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how to do that, but just know that it's about a 10x bow. The quiver is the most expensive item I have. I did craft this. I totally didn't need this quiver to, to make it to 100. I was running a, a quiver that was worth about four or five exalts at the time. Uh, but this quiver is worth, uh, this this actually worth well over 10x. I got lucky, I got really lucky with it and made it in about 10 to 15x worth of currency. But this quiver is a bit of an outlier, just putting out there, not super necessary. Uh, now a lot of people are going for the new influence crafting items on the gloves, chest, helm, and boot slot. I vouch to go a completely different way. Uh, I tried to get fairly cheap uniques and get some of the best double corrupts 
imaginable on them, essentially. Uh, I do have literally the best double corrupt I can get on these gloves. This makes it so I don't even have to worry about getting Rampage through the secondary item here. I just get it automatically. Uh, these gloves are actually really, really good in conjunction with uh, Darasso's Defiance. In my opinion, I really like this chest. It gives me a whole lot of extra movement speed, some extra uh, defense, but I understand this chest is not anywhere near as good. You know, just looking at the chest in a vacuum, that slot, this chest is nowhere near uh, as valuable as a high, high quality uh, gear craft in. But it's just, it really does serve its purpose very well uh, for me here, and it's super cheap to get. Not necessarily with a double corruption, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, the boots surprisingly cheap even with this incredible double uh, corruption and the helmet um this helmet did cost me about 3x to get the enchant with this uh corruption but uh yeah you know you, you see a lot of this gear is really just kind of looking at a few x per maybe i mean not counting the headhunter we're looking at i don't know like 30 maybe 40x worth of gear here and that may sound like a lot to you but you gotta keep in mind uh, I am running a raider, which is not, you know, it is somewhat tanky, but it's not, it's not like a skeleton build or whatever. No, I don't have tons and tons of tankiness, so I do need to have a little bit of life. I always ran with at least 4,200 life. I remember that kind of being a key number that I always had. And yeah, that's the kind of gear that I'm running with here. You can check the POB again if you want to look into further detail with that. Actually, we will, I will pull that up right here real quick. Whoop. For some reason, every time I try to click this, excuse me now. Okay, there we go. We see here that my grand total of my DPS on Caustic Arrow. By the way, with a favorable configuration, like I, I, I configured Rampage slots in here, I configured uh, overlapping po uh, pods, I configured uh, withering stacks basically up the max, which with anomalous uh, Caustic Arrow usually will be about max. Flask active, you know, onslaught active, well, obviously onslaught active, endurance, you know, all that stuff is active there, and it only gives me 1.1 million DPS there, so it doesn't sound like a lot, but, I mean, you just saw me do that run, did it look like I only did 1 million DPS? <laughs> it was basically the gloom shine. <laughs> That's all it was, basically the gloom shine. Now, I do, do, I do a lot of DPS because I have headhunter buffs, and I have shrine effects. Uh, out the wazoo so that does crank it up and that's kind of one big takeaway for you perhaps is that you can be extra tanky and extra do extra dps if you get in those shrines as well as obviously having a headhunter is, is a big deal with one caveat on the headhunter it can get you killed if you're like opening strong boxes with it and then it automatically teleports you back into a kill zone <laughs> of corpse explosion or whatever uh so it does have some drawbacks it did happen to me once by the way i think i died a grand total of four times at level 99 for the record so uh let's see i also have a uh, caustic or toxic rain here this is the ballista setup so single target i'm doing the caustic arrow damage plus this damage it's like a grand total of not even not even 2.5 million dps um and yet i just deleted the boss because of all the headhunter buffs essentially yeah, so effective hit pool, 67,000. I, I don't know if that... Honestly, I don't even know if that's a big number or not. I don't think it's an extraordinarily high number. It's definitely not any kind of number you'd expect with ZTPS. But here's a number that'll blow your mind right here. 298%. So, uh, when I have all my Rampage buffs, well, I have a Flask active, which is 100% time, basically. Even with no Acceleration Shrine... 298% increased movement speed. So with a few headhunter buffs and acceleration shrine, I'm moving at probably well over a thousand percent movement speed, which at that point is almost uncontrollable. It can almost be a downside <laughs> when you're moving that fast. But hey, you know, I, I do want to emphasize that moving ultra fast is its own defensive layer. So that is kind of a big deal there. Okay, about the big surprise. Let's talk big, big surprise. I'm going to go to this tab right here. I'll give you a couple seconds. Can you see it? Can you see the big surprise? Here it is. Follow my cursor. Ooh. Mage blood. Now, this may not seem like a huge surprise to you guys if you've been watching my videos, seeing how much currency per hour I'm farming, because I could have easily bought this at the time, but I did not. I did not purchase this mage blood. No. Uh, it, it has come to me free of charge in that respect uh no i did not even gamble it actually i, I don't do i don't do gambling to be honest I, i've never done like the gwenning gambles and stuff not really anyway i never farmed expedition this league which is which i hear is a pretty good currency earning um 
strat, but I didn't do it. No, I found this the good old fashioned way, the most glorious way possible. Random drop, baby. Completely random. <laughs> and I didn't really know where to put this sort of secondary public service announcement. Oh yeah, I dropped a mage blood. I didn't really know where to where to put that in my uh, YouTube channel, so I'm putting it here. And uh, another reason I'm putting it here is because ironically, this thing dropped almost exactly when I hit level 100. I was in the middle of doing a 48 map session. And in that 48 map session, I hit level 100, I dropped a random mage blood, and I even dropped two separate unnatural instincts in that session, as well as three brother stashes and like, I don't know, a lot of exalted orb. Suffice to say, it was basically the best farming st uh, session of my entire life. <laughs> so I'm, of course, uh, totally uh, happy about that. And this this all happened like yesterday, so super cool. And and I even divined this thing up to near perfection <laughs> in like 10 divine orbs, which is crazy lucky. Uh, I know the dexterity role is super important, so maybe it's not that amazing. But hey, there you go. So that's the big surprise. I, I hope you know to encourage some of you guys to try leveling yourself up to level 100 it's really fun to farm a lot of currency and also be able to solo level your way up to 100 i i see them as kind of on equal footing to be honest or if anything i did mention earlier that i f i'm actually more proud about hitting level 100 uh particularly while um you know playing the game in an efficient manner when i'm, when I'm farming a lot of currency per hour you know it's one thing to like go delve your way up to 100 and it's obviously you can just pay for the service you know th those things aren't that special but to do it while uh you're also doing basically your favorite content in the league at the same time now i can't guarantee you can do your favorite content and hit level 100 but you can certainly do kind of like super fast mapping strategies and hit level 100 with or without a headhunter again uh i, ha I was wearing this belt at level 98 and a half at level 98 and a half, I had enough currency to buy a headhunter, and then of course, I bought the headhunter and I started wearing it. Uh, but I definitely could have made it all the way there. So that's about it for the video. Well, we'll see you around. Uh, good luck to you. Hit that level 100, earn a lot of currency. Thanks for watching. I'm out for now.